case briefs and so much more. LS Data's got what you're looking for. In the mid 1980s, a legal battle arose surrounding a view easement in Coronado that was undeniably steeped in controversy. Clayton L. Miller owned a property which carried a restrictive covenant from 1953, allowing the neighboring Whitby property a view easement. Yet when it came time for Miller to transfer the property to his daughter and son-in-law, the truth of this encumbrance was lost in translation, setting the stage for a contentious legal dispute that made its way to California's Court of Appeal. As most property transfers do, this one required the issuance of a title insurance policy. The chosen insurer was Fidelity National Title Insurance Company, who, unknowingly or not, issued this policy devoid of the critical Whitby encumbrance. As a result, the new owners discovered this restriction only after acquiring their new home, immediately filed a claim against Fidelity. The insurance company obliged, shouldering $125,000, the diminution in the property's value due to this forgotten easement. This one-time payout, however, sparked a quest for reimbursement by Fidelity, who turned their sights to Miller. Not surprisingly, Miller responded with a motion for summary judgment from the Superior Court an attempt to absolve himself of the issue. It was here that the Superior Court originally erred, failing to consider conflicting evidence and granting Miller's summary judgment in the untested waters of whether he had breached an implied covenant against encumbrances. This shortcut to victory for Miller was short-lived. He was soon caught in Fidelity's appeal to the California Court of Appeal, where the short-sightedness of the earlier decision was flayed wide open. The Court of Appeal rejected Miller's hasty interpretation of the grant deed and pinpointed the crucial disputed facts that necessitated trial. Far from the earlier ruling, the Court was meticulous to underline that only a trial could unearth Miller's potential breach and whether Fidelity had the right to equitable subrogation, their reimbursement from Miller. But more than simply an about turn of Miller's fortunes, the Court of Appeal ruling signified a pledge to thoroughness over speed a reminder of legal equipoise in the face of complexity. They refused to entertain Miller's objections to Fidelity's recovery, pled on the grounds of the latter's alleged misrepresentations, and categorically stated that unless otherwise agreed between parties, a grant deed carries with it an implied covenant against encumbrances. This push for a trial finally signaled a fair battleground where each party could arm itself with facts a sharp contrast to the earlier trial that marginalized the intricacies of this case. Thus, the decision to reverse Miller's summary judgment and gear up for trial illustrated the court's commitment to deconstructing complex factual issues and ensuring fair and equitable judgments. The final round now awaits, poised to answer if fidelity can indeed prove their case. Case briefs and so much more. LS Data's got what you're looking for Visit lsd.law Elevate your mind Leave the stress of class